Hello, welcome to Mental Health Matters. My name is Barbara Myers and I'm the host of the program. Tonight's program will be focusing on schizophrenia. We're very delighted to have as a guest uh, Catherine Lum. And Catherine has schizoaffective disorder, which is very closely related to schizophrenia. And she'll be talking about some of her experiences. Yeah, OK. Um, thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, I started having symptoms early in my life. Um, I guess um, for me, I remember feeling afraid of people and depressed, too, as a young child. Um, I remember in first grade I um, had this idea that came to me that if people really understood what it was like inside that they would hate me. And so the rest of my childhood was pretty much spent hiding inside, not letting people know what was inside me. So I, I never talked about myself with any in my feelings. Um, I had playmates, but um, they would tell me and share with me, and I, I wouldn't share back. And um, another thing that happened as a child was that um, I had some problems being teased in school and things. And I would stuff my anger instead of feeling, allowing myself to feel anger. I would stuff it inside me and tell me it was my fault that if I had been more like them, they wouldn't pick on me. And so it was really my fault for being different, for being somebody who was pickable. <laughs> so um, this went on throughout high school and into my um, first year of college. And I remember it, a time, a specific time, during I was out jogging with a friend. And it was over winter break from my freshman year. And um, it's like inside my mind, it switched, my mode of thinking switched from understanding people in the world and accepting them, accepting how they felt about me, you know, if it was good or bad or whatever. It was like something was coming up, my anger was coming back up, and I could no longer keep it down. I couldn't control it, I couldn't squelch it. And so what came out at that time in my mind, I think I crossed over from mental health to mental illness. And I didn't start to hear voices until a couple, maybe a month or two later. But inside my mind, it was like I figured, oh, now they're going to find out. Now they're going to hate me. Now they're going to find out what I'm really like inside. And they're going to hate me. Mm -hmm. And so um, shortly after that, I did begin to hear voices. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Well, what was the voices like? What did they say? Um, for me, it was hate voices, um, and it has been, because the voices have continued on ever since then. But for me, um, my voices aren't from a disembodied source. I've, I think I've heard a disembodied voice inside my head only once I remember in my life. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, my voices, they seem to come from other people in the environment. Somebody walking by, driving by, somebody at, I meet. Mostly strangers, mm -hmm. hmm. people, but for me, it mimics reality. And at the same time, I know that I have schizoaffective disorder because there have been times when I know I've hallucinated something. Um, I used to hear my father say, I'm sick of it, I'm just sick of it. Mm -hmm. And I know that he didn't say that. Mm -hmm. And I heard my neighbor, a friend, say something to somebody about me and I know later on that she never said that, and I believed her. And so I realized, wait, I am hallucinating. Mm -hmm. But for the longest time, um, I, I thought it was real. I thought I deserved it. This is reality. This is what's coming back to me for what I'm like inside, and I deserve it. And that feeling of um, deserving it actually um, became, it was hard to diagnose. Because um, even though I was hearing all these voices and was floridly psychotic, and um, nobody really knew what was wrong with me. So my parents, like, they used to take me to a counselor, and the counselor would try to talk to me. And no matter how much they talked, they couldn't turn my thoughts around. Yeah. But 
finally, the, my counselor told my parents, well, she can't be helped. So they took me to a psychiatrist. And within five minutes, the psychiatrist says, you have schizophrenia, you have depression, you need the medication, I'm going to give you this. This is an illness, you can get over it. Mm -hmm. It's not something you're doomed to feel the rest of your life. And the idea that it was an illness, wow. that was new to me. Mm -hmm. Very, very, and, and to my family, to know that there was a name called schizophrenia mm -hmm. that explained what I was going through. So, um, once I was on medication, I, and medication was strong enough, I also noticed a very profound change in my thoughts. It's like before, my thoughts had been like a whirlpool, just obsessing, thinking, 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 how can I get out of this? How can I change myself so people won't hate me? What can I do to deal with all this hatred? It was like a whirlpool. And I remember for the first time lying in bed and feeling like I had just been thrown up on the, onto the shore. I had been shipwrecked in the sea and the waves had been crashing over me and I had been struggling to keep afloat and then, then I found myself on the beach and just resting and feeling peace, peace, mm -hmm. just for the first time oh, that I ever wow. remembered. Yeah. And then I remember the first day I said, you know, this was a good day. Mm -hmm. I hadn't had a good day for the, anything I can remember. And I think part of having this all my life, having part of this actually made it easier for me to deal with when it was, its, when it was at its worst because I didn't know what happiness was back then. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was to have peace of mind and happiness. Mm -hmm. And so I figured this is the way life is. Life is hard. But well, now that I know what happiness and peace of mind is, I think it would be very hard for me to go back to have to experience that level of, yeah, but that's basically where I'm at. Okay.